everyone. Um, we're going to look at a brief overview of Dante's Divine Comedy, and it may be necessary to stop this recording in the middle and um, do a second one. depends on how long it gets. So why Divine Comedy? Well, in Dante's time, comedy was still a term used to describe works that were usually written about everyday human sorts of practical matters in very informal everyday language. Um, more serious works would be written in perhaps Latin and um, you know they were called high matters as opposed to low matters. Well Dante came along and wrote about a very important serious topic but still using the everyday Italian. So it gets the word comedy. It doesn't mean it's funny haha -ha, because nothing much funny happens in the Divine Comedy. So there are three divisions of the Divine Comedy and we're only reading a couple of excerpts from the Inferno, which uh, in, in English would be hell. Uh, the second book was called Purgatory and the third Paradise. So in the first two books, um, the Roman poet Virgil is Dante's guide. Dante is actually the character in the poem. He uses his own name. And then in the Paradise, he is um, escorted through the, 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 the landscape of Paradise by Beatrice, who is kind of like his perfect idealized woman. So Dante's hell um, is is uh, envisioned as sort of a funnel-shaped um, opening in the earth. So you'll see a lot of pictures on the website that uh, kind of try to depict what the what hell might have looked like for Dante. And you'll see it's shaped like a funnel um, divided into different levels. So as we go downward through hell, it goes from the least of, of the evil traits of sins down to the greatest type of sin. So for an example here, we have um, the entranceway to hell here. And then the first circle, which is kind of a limbo. Um, gluttons are in the third circle. Um, the, uh, these down here the, are, are like um, fortune tellers, hypocrites, thieves, and then traitors at the very bottom. And this conception traitor was it was seen as the worst kind of crime. And this link takes you to lots of different um, maps of, of uh, Dante's Inferno. So the, the books are divided into sections called cantos. And you'll be looking at Canto 1 and Canto 34, so the opening book of the Inferno and the final uh, book. And each canto deals with one or, or more specific circles of hell. And each one of those circles may have several different, um, I don't know, different translations call it something different, but kind of like ditches or trenches where there were different like subsections of that particular sin. So the story starts off in what we call the dark wood of error where um, Dante meets um, Virgil. And you'll find lots and lots of artwork out there um, of different parts of the Inferno. It's uh, artists since the Inferno was written um, have come back again and again to the poem as inspiration for their artwork. It's also appeared in a number of movies too, a lot of like contemporary movies. Um, so this is uh, William Blake's conception of the gate of hell. So at the vestibule, um, again, that's where the, the journey begins on Good Friday, where Dante agrees to go with uh, Virgil for a tour of hell. In Canto 5, we have the Lustful, and this is Paolo and Francesco. These would have been names that were familiar to the people in Dante's time. And that's part of what makes it, it difficult to read the, uh, the Divine Comedy for contemporary audiences. Um, this is kind of like a scandal sheet almost, uh, the who's who of, of Florence and other parts of Italy. And had we lived back then, we would know who all these people were um, that, and, and what their problems were and their sins were. And it would have made sense where, where Dante put them. 
part of our problem is we don't know who these people are, so sometimes we can get lost with some of, of the names. So I'm going to start, stop here and start another um, video.